Do we really need $3 billion worth of new federal courthouses? You heard right, $3 billion. We're talking about some of the most expensive buildings that have ever been built anywhere. And guess who's going to be paying for them? Sounds like it might be time for a little reality check. Tomorrow on the CBS Evening News. 20 years after he was expelled from the Soviet Union as a traitor, Alexander Solzhenitsyn is on his way home tonight. The Nobel Prize winning author and his family left this morning from the house in the Vermont woods where he has lived and worked in exile. Solzhenitsyn predicted years ago that communism would fall. Now he says he hopes to be of some help to Russia. The prison camps Solzhenitsyn wrote about are history now, but other legacies of the communist era will be around for a long time in the republics of the former Soviet Union. Among them are effects of the world's worst nuclear accident eight years ago in Chernobyl. Correspondent Alan Pizzi went back to the scene, and we warn you, many of the images in this report could be disturbing to some viewers. Hidden in this otherwise idyllic setting is an almost forgotten legacy of a modern nightmare, victims of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. All the children here were born with genetic defects and physical deformities and were abandoned by their parents. Three-year-old Olya Krasovska will never walk. Her legs are only a few inches long. Maya Nikolaevna has worked here for 30 years. Her records show it was never like this before Chernobyl blew up. All of these children because of Chernobyl? Yeah. Yeah. The former Soviet Union admitted to only 31 deaths from Chernobyl. Medical experts say it could be as high as 8,000. They've only just begun to count the number of children suffering genetic defects and cancers, and no one dares even guess the cost to future generations. In Belarus, thyroid cancer is running rampant in young children. The rate of thyroid cancer is roughly a hundred times what you would expect from uh, spontaneous thyroid cancer, cancer that is not caused by any specifically known cause. The explosion at Chernobyl's number four reactor heaved 50 tons of radioactive dust into the sky. The reactor was entombed, but two others are still operating. Experts claim the place is another disaster waiting to happen and the shelter encasing the destroyed reactor is rapidly deteriorating. The Ukrainian government is demanding $8 billion from the West to close Chernobyl and replace other creaky nuclear facilities. The only help the decrepit orphanage gets is from a small band of British aid workers who come once a year with gifts and much-needed skills. The tongue is sticking through the lips. Uh, ah, look at that. It's giving us away. An American charity is thinking of joining the British group. I've forgotten about Chernobyl. And I'm sure much of the rest of the world has forgotten about Chernobyl, but it's still here. And the world forgets the children of Chernobyl at its peril, because the unthinkable could happen again. Alan Pizzi, CBS News, Blon, Belarus. Coming up next, Eye on America. Tonight, the wonder drug of the century. Doctors are wondering what we're going to do without it. Barbara is running for her life. This angry employee killed her husband, and she's next on his list. An all-new 48 Hours Tonight. We've been reporting to you this week about a hidden danger in some meat and produce. Bacteria that can make you very sick, even kill you. The danger posed by bacterial infection is growing rapidly in this country because we're losing our number one weapon against it. Dr. Bob Arnott has more of his special investigation in tonight's Eye on America. Antibiotics, the miracle drugs of our time. It was arguably the greatest medical discovery of the 20th century. Drugs that could wipe out diseases in a matter of days. But for millions of Americans with serious illnesses, antibiotics are quickly turning from miracle to mirage. We already have some infections that are essentially untreatable with antibiotics. We're entering into something that could be nightmarish. His phone, the surgery. For the past six months, Debbie French has been living her own nightmare in a losing battle against tuberculosis. TB is a potentially deadly disease that for years had been effectively treated with antibiotics. But for Debbie and thousands of patients like her, 
the drugs just don't work. I came home from the doctor and I just went in my room and I sat there and cried. My dad came in and goes, why are you crying? I said, why can't I ever be healthy? Why can't I fight this thing? At least 50,000 Americans a year die from infections that were once curable with antibiotics. The problem is that certain bacteria have developed super strains that many antibiotics can no longer kill. Many doctors term this dangerous phenomenon antibiotic resistance, and it threatens to throw modern medicine back into the dark ages. Over the past three years, many illnesses have become resistant to antibiotics. Certain bacteria that cause tuberculosis, pneumonia, meningitis, sinusitis, ear and blood infections are now untreatable with common antibiotics, such as penicillin, ampicillin, tetracycline, and erythromycin. We're going to see people getting sicker, dying from these infections, and we'll be in the midst of a true medical disaster. Dr. Alexander Tomas, a world-renowned expert on antibiotic resistance, showed us how the bacteria are winning the battle against the medicine. He showed us two tubes containing different strains of a bacterium that causes meningitis. He treated each with penicillin. In this, this tube, where it looks like water, the bacteria... It's all dead, gone. They are dead, exploded, gone. And in this one? This one, they continue growing. So even though this one has lots and lots of penicillin in it, it continues to grow, which is why it's cloudy. Yes. And this would kill a patient? If it were a meningitis caused by this bacterium, the patient will die. Ironically, experts say antibiotic resistance is caused by the overuse of antibiotics, which are often prescribed for colds and sore throats where they are useless. Indiscriminate use of antibiotics are creating strains of germs that will, in fact, become resistant to all of our available drugs. <coughs> Nine-month-old Luke Frankel has taken five different antibiotics to treat his chronic ear infections. Nothing has worked. I'm tired of him having the pain. It's hard. It's just hard. Now Luke must undergo risky ear surgery in an effort to cure his infection and prevent permanent hearing loss. Researchers say there are no new antibiotics on the horizon. And as a result, we are quickly heading towards what doctors fear is the post-antibiotic era when no antibiotics work, and diseases are untreatable and contagious. What will the post-antibiotic era look like? It looks pretty grim to me. We could, of course, be wearing masks as we go around our everyday lives so that we are almost living in those so-called balloons where bacteria are kept out. But already, patients are suffering and dying from illnesses that science predicted 40 years ago would be eradicated with antibiotics, but the scientists were wrong. And before medicine catches up with the microbes, many more people are likely to die. In New York, this is Dr. Bob Arnott for Eye on America. Coming up next on the CBS Evening News, fight night at the ballpark. Is this America's national pastime? In baseball, the Los Angeles Dodgers today gave up on their troubled superstar, Daryl Strawberry. The 32-year-old Strawberry has been under treatment for drug abuse. He has not played this year. The Dodgers cut Strawberry and say they've reached a settlement on his multi-million dollar contract, but won't reveal details. Besides drug abuse, baseball is also trying to deal with an epidemic of violence. Arguments and fights have always been part of the game, but this year, players seem more willing than ever to get something started. Richard Threlkeld has more. Throws the helmet, hits Quantrill, and here's the big collision. They say baseball's the essential American game. If so, what's been happening out at the ballparks this spring doesn't speak very well for America. This was the Red Sox against the Mariners. Angelosi's hit in the back, and he charges the mound. At least once a week, on average, a pitcher hits a batter, and what ensues is a bench-clearing brawl. In this case, the Braves against the Mets. This is what baseball is going to have to stop. This is not good. National League President Len Coleman's been handing out ball player fines and suspensions right and left. I don't want to be in a situation where I have millions of kids all around this country watching baseball games and having children think that uh, they can just rush the mound or hit a uh, player purposely uh, with, with a pitch. Here we go. But a lot of the fans don't think the ball players are getting the message. You got players making $35 million 
Man, $5,000 ain't going to hurt their pocket over a fight. And to listen to some of the players, maybe those fans are right. When the Cardinals' Alan Watson hit the Marlins' arrested Destrada last Sunday, Destrada felt obliged to charge the mound. I got to defend myself, but it's nothing that you're real happy about. It becomes embarrassing when you're sitting there with your kid explaining that, yes, these are grown men, and yes, they are playing a very uh, time-honored and, and uh, precise game, and they can't control themselves. Here goes Bell. If things go on like this, comedians are going to be saying about the great American pastime what they used to say about hockey in the bad old days. I took my son down to watch the fights last night, and a baseball game broke out. We're going to have a brouhaha. Richard Threlkeld, CBS News, New York. And that's our news. Dan Rather will be along later tonight with 48 Hours, a look at what's behind the rise in violence in the workplace. 48 Hours, terror on the job tonight at 10, 9 central time on the CBS television network. I'm Connie Chung. I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. For Dan and all of us at CBS News, good night.